Alright, welcome viewers. Today we are going to construct in volumes and in volumes. And we are going to use three methods to achieve that goal. Most times, many people construct in volumes by using only the second method. But today, we are going to add two other methods, known as the triangular method and the square method. But before I go into this, what actually is an involute? An involute is nothing but a plain figure. Engineers devised through which they used to construct special machinery parts, especially, especially the profile of gear teeth. That is the major thing that we use involute for. It is not that the involute itself is what is used to manufacture it. It is what is used to design the profile of gearteeth. So how the face of the gearteeth curves is actually extracted from an involute. So involute is the computer work or the paper work which is later transferred into physical and manufacturing practice to produce a particular gear profile. Having said that, please, I don't want to waste your time. Let's go straight into constructing this thing. So we are starting with the first method, known as the triangle method for constructing an involute. So look at how you go. We will construct a triangle and we are using a triangle of size 20 for this job. So you begin this way by constructing an equilateral triangle. So let's draw it this way. And the sides are 20. So I begin from here to here. Then I measure out 20. This is 20. Take your compass, take your compass and complete the construction task. Complete the construction. Simply measure out 20 by using your compass. Now I place it here and one end of the line I draw, make an arc, go to the other end, complete the arc. With this, I should be having my fire now. After I have drawn this, drawn that, I can clean up these things. This is my triangle. When the triangle is ready, the next thing is to draw the tangents to the triangle. So the one, the one will go this way, the next one will go that way, and the last one will go this way. Three sides. Therefore, let me go in this way. The first one is the shortest. And the last one is the longest. I have drawn it like this. Did you get that? And I will call this one one. Then I will draw the second one to go like this. This way. Alright? This way. And I will call this place two. Then the last one is going to go like this. And then after I have drawn this line, I will call this place three. Are you seeing it? I am assuming that you should be able to come agree with me and using the red marker as my thin line. Then at this moment, I shall now take the black marker to print out the ink volume. So pay attention and see how this thing will be done. This is my marker. I set it. Since I call here one, I will place the pin of my compass, which is this at one. Then place the marker at three and then start your journey. Once you have reached that first tangent, please stop there. You stop there, hold it, the pencil there on the line. Please open this one back to come to two. Why this one remains here? Then when you get to two, why this one is here? You continue your journey. Very correct. It appears we have not reached an end. Very good. So that means I will need to extend this to reach the end. Alright, where this curve reached. Do you see that? Now, after I have done that, the next thing I will do is you know my pin is here. It 
was here before. When I reached this place, the next thing I will do is to extend this one back to three and still retain my pencil here at the end. So, what I will do now will be like this. I shall have something of this, this nature. From this point, my journey will continue. It will continue. And as the case will be, you see that I am still going up until I get to this place. Very correct. Do you see that the involute has traveled coming under my drawing board and appearing there? So, the involute will automatically be here. It will be stuck on this point. Then, I 
will, from here, I keep feeling it on this spot. I will extend this one to four and make sure this thing is come to this place. So I will now continue.
seven, uh, five, six, this is seven, then eight and zero will meet. That is how it's supposed to be. Eight and zero supposed to meet. Now, having done that, we now come to this point. Introduce a tangent. The tangent will start from zero. The start at zero is the longest. So it's going to be like this. It's going to be the longest. Please draw a tangent. Let it go. To be the longest. Take the number tangent at one will be the shortest. Place it also. Do you see how I'm placing this on top of this line? This side on the line, 90 degrees there to give me the tangent. Shortest. I turn it again to this one. Going this way. It's going to be like this. Okay? Follow by this. Now I'm come to this side. Aha, uh -huh. you see that? I turn it the other way around. You see that? I turn it this particular way around. You see it? I turn it to this way around. The more you go, the line becomes longer. You see that? And lastly, number seven. We get this here. So the longest line will be the line that comes from eight and this one. All right. Having done this, we are set to complete, to start introducing our marks. Start taking our dimensional distances that will give us the in volute. You can see that this method is different from the first two that we treated. So, how do we start marking it up? We are going to mark the line from zero that goes tangent from zero will give it 80 pole division to correspond with the 80 pole division of the circle. And this is how you do it use your compass, measure the distance between two divisions of the circle. I measure between 4 and 5, you can measure between 3 and 4, 2 and 3, any equal division. Take this measurement, start from 0 here, mark it 1, this will be 1, and this one should be 2, this should be 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, and lastly 8, and lastly what? 8. Now, having done this, you number it. You number it. One, two. Although this is like that. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we begin. Look at how you do it. Some people suggest, and this is how you do it. Come from zero to one here. Please come to where one is, mark it on the tangent. Copy again from 0 to 2. Go to where 2 is, mark the tangent. Copy from 0 to 3. Come to 3 and then mark it. Copy from 0 to 4. Come to where tangent 4 is and mark it. Copy from 0 to 5. Come to 5. And the tangent and mark it. Copy from 0 to 6. Go to 6 and get the tangent of 6. Mark it. Copy from 0 to 7. And go to 7 and mark it. The official is the last one is 8, which is here. So it's going to be here. Now let us see how we're going to bring that in the core. If you have French core, you can join the points straight away. But if you don't have French cup, you can still use your compass to do it. So see what you will do. How you're going to join the point so that the tangent will come out. Now, please put start from one, not zero. Please stop in at one. Let's start a movement from zero and stop at one. Stop at one. Next, move your hand to two. Take your hand to where you stopped at one. Continue your journey. It will stop at two. The next one, 
Put your hand to faith. Take it to where you stop at two. Continue your journey. It will stop at three. Move your hand to four. Take it to four. Start from two to three and stop at four. Are you seeing it? Then yeah, move your hand to five. Continue from four to where you stop. And stop at what? Five. This time around, move your hand to six. Move your hand to five where you stopped. Continue your journey and you will stop at six. Do you see this matching well? Take it to seven. Move your hand to where you stopped at six. Continue your journey up until you reach seven. The last one is take it to zero. Bring it to seven. And then your journey will end at eight. Terminate at eight. My marker is finished. So that we get something like that. So our aim goal will be something of this nature. So the evolute is out. Now I promised that I'm going to insert a tangent in this one. And the method I use in this is the same method you use in all other ones that we have done. Remember your journey starts at zero, so the thing will go wrong. So look at it. You can choose a point convenient for you. So let us say I'm going to insert a tangent here. And why I call this place Q. They say insert a tangent there. See what step you're going to do. First of all, come to the center of the circle, draw a line to connect that cube. Are you listening? Listen attentively. So I draw a line to connect this to the point where the tangent will pass. The part, I have drawn the line to this point. Is it clear now? The next thing we are going to do is to bisect the line from this center. I just drawn and bisect it into two. You can take your compass and do the dissect now. So we place this one here. I bring my hand to this place and draw an arc this side and the other one this side. Go to the center arc and then where I dissect, draw this one and come to this side again, draw the other one. I dissect. I have dissected this. So the bisector will go like this. Mm -hmm. The bisector will go like this. Haven't bisected it, please. The next thing we are going to do is to use this point to draw a semicircle. Do you understand? Please don't draw it that side. Draw it this way. I hear me. Draw a semicircle. Sorry. Draw the semicircle this way. The semicircle should touch this circle. Don't draw it out. Draw it this way. And this is what we are seeing. The semicircle in question will have this distance from here to here as its diameter. So you're going to draw a semicircle either this direction or you draw a semicircle. In this direction. Do you understand? Meaning you're going to place your feet here. For me, I want to draw my own like this. Then you can choose to draw your own like that. Whichever side you choose, please keep to it and stick to it as you finish your job. So in this case, I will come up like this. Place my pin here. Bring this to the center here. Center of the circle. Draw a semicircle to terminate here. And like I said, you can choose to place your own the other way around. There is no problem. But now, the, what is the essence of this semicircle is to show 
to us where we are going to draw a line in physics. That line is called normal. Normal because this line is to be at 90 degrees with the tangent that will pass here. So I will draw a line from here. It will pass here. You see this, this circle go like this. We touch this circle exactly here. And that is where I am going to draw the normal. So I will draw the normal. It come from the point here. And the normal will come like this. This way. If you like, I can draw that pass. But I need this one. The moment I get this normal, then my tangent should come out immediately. How will I do that? Take your compass once more. Go to the place here where this normal touch the point and the tangent will pass. Use any reasonable reduce. Don't it should not be too small, it should not be too big. Place it on this spot. Just touch the set the normal. Draw a line that should be almost more than a semicircle. I think the, this curve started from here, which is the line on the normal. So please, please don't alter this radius. Use it again. Place it here. Make a mark. Do you notice this from here to here is 60 degrees? Make another mark. Come here again. 60 degrees. Very correct. Please, this second 60 degrees bisect it. Still using the same radius. I will place my pin here. Draw an arc and place the other pin here. Draw an arc. Place this pin. And here comes the tangent. I am going to use a black ink to do that. You see this point, this location, and then this place will give us the tangent to the what? In point. This is the tangent. Now. Tangent to the new volume has been started. In case you choose to go this way, no problem. All you need to do after drawing it, you will trace the point where the semicircle, turn this circle here, then your normal will not go like this. Then you draw that small arc, this one now will go this way. Then from there you measure 60 and 60 by 70. It will still be the same thing, no difference. I hear me. So having said this, I would like to say that if you find this tutorial very, very useful, very important, please share it. Let it go wide. Let other people see it. Let them learn. Yes, let them learn, okay? Please follow my channel immediately and recommend this page to many, as many groups as you can. Because this is a section I have chosen because of so many calls coming to me for my YouTube page, which I also want you to subscribe to now, so I can be getting these tutorials correctly. I have made a promise I will start teaching the AC part. But in case you don't know my YouTube page, please just go towards the particular page I titled youtube.com slash, we call it what, spec, sorry, we call it uh, Ziltec, capital Ziltec Tutorials. You can see this on the screen, it's on the screen, the correct distance, Ziltec Tutorial. Please search out this and go there. You will see solution set, objective questions, starting from 2014 till date. They have been answered. It will assist you to do more in your YM and as a teacher to also be able to prepare your students for exam coming. Thank you for listening. Very soon I shall compile questions which I will give out free. Talking about past questions, compile them in PDF format and then when they are ready, I will make them available at affordable price. Thank you and God bless you.